Sometimes, when I'm out filming videos, I see lots of little things that aren't relevant to the video I'm filming. But if you string those little things together, they almost make an alternative vlog. Gorgeous summer day, really warm and sunny. I'm just tackling the Medlock 4 episode, which is quite a big episode, it's quite involved. I've just had to come back to where I left off at the culvert, if you remember that bit. I'm gonna chase now the railway tracks, the tram tracks rather, down there and try and follow the Medlock. So this is just a taster really, it's quite a big, for me at the minute, I've only just started filming it, it's a bit daunting, but uh, I'll try and get it done in a few days and get it out uh, next week sometime. But I'll tell you what to say, it's only like a mile, two mile outside the city centre. It's a really untouched part of Manchester, this really undeveloped. This is almost like a, a meadow, you know what I mean? Like a little bit of green belt in the right one mile away from the uh, city centre. And up here, just up here, is another little gem. I'll turn the camera around so you can see. It's a strange part of town, this, it really is. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, those steps there are going to feature in the story, the Medlock episode 4 story. And then, uh, and then up here, I've just seen a street up here, uh, and this is another little gem. I mean, ugly, but totally untouched. Probably untouched for years. Just wait till we get around this corner here, and I'll just show you this. So this is a good little street. Uh, what's it called? Cavalier Street, it's called there. Can we zoom in? We can't zoom in on things, but Cavalier Street. Turn the camera around again. Look at that, you can almost see the black and white, can't you? That mill at the top there. Oh, how I wish I had the drone. I'd have the, uh, the drone flying over that. But I'm interested in what's up there. In fact, you know what, I think it's a park. But uh, we'll just go around this corner here and see what's around there. So I think that just goes back up towards Cambrian Street up there. And I've got too much gear these days, too much gear with me. I used to have a little camera, a pocket-sized camera. It was brilliant, it did great video. And it was called, it was a Canon G7X Mark II, if you want to, really want to know. And it was a brilliant camera, it fitted in my pocket. I had a little bit of fluff on top to stop the wind from making noises on it and everything. And it worked fantastically. You saw that video I did that was near the Bowstones in Five Manchester Mysteries. Well, the incredible wind up there, it prevented all the wind rumble and everything. It was a great, great camera. Um, anyway, should we just say, it broke down <laughs> and I had to buy a new one. And I decided I was gonna get this particular camera which was hailed as the latest vlogging thing, you know, the latest camera to go around and make videos with. And I'll show you now, I'll show you what's in my bag. Too much gear, too much gear, and I probably made the wrong decision. I should have got the, uh, the old camera, the G7X back. But uh, nice camera, but I'll show you the problem now. I'm walking around with these days. So if we just open this up, in here we have a selfie stick which gives me reach for the GoPro and I like the GoPro because it's got really good image stabilization on it so when you're walking around it cuts down on that and it's more of a glide which is quite good but then inside here we've got a cloth to wipe the lenses with the very trusty mini tripod that which you uh, you have to have that's amazing that but look at this look at this so there's my camera bag so I've got a spare SD card there and my bugger for not zipping things up there's the camera, if I can get it out. There's the camera, it's a Canon M50 and it's a truly great camera, it does great video. But the, it comes with detachable lenses. Now, the old G7X, it had one, one lens on, right? And that lens was a, a zoom lens and it would zoom in and out with a little more try zoom and 
totally versatile lens. This thing, if I want to zoom in and out now, I have to use that. So I've got to stick that on the front now. And you see of all sorts of caps, lens caps and everything. Uh, if you want to know, that's a 55 to 200 uh, zoom lens. So if I want to get a close in shot, I've got to change lenses and stick that on the front. This is a nice, quite a nice wide angle lens. So it's got a, what's this one? 11 to 22. And it's great for vlogging when you're walking around and talking to it. It's a nice wide angle shot on it. But like I say, you want to focus in on anything, you've got to start changing your lenses and then you've got to take lens caps off and too much when you're out and about, too much. So I really think I've made a mistake. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> right, let me show you this then. So the, the microphones on this thing are on the front here here right here um, just above the lens right in any sort of wind in any sort of wind uh, even slight breeze the sound is unusable because the rumble of the wind just renders your audio useless and I've already tried it believe it or not I've had to go and reshoot a clip when I first got the camera because the the, the wind rumble was just absolutely use it, made, it rendered the clip useless so you have to buy a little microphone to sit in it. And that's the good thing about this camera. You can put a, an external microphone on it. Or a little external microphone. And I'll just show you how that sits on the top. And it sits on the top there like that. And it's great, it gives you great audio. But you see the uh, little side panel there so you can see yourself when you're talking to it. it. Gives you great external audio, great quality audio. But that is subject to wind noise as well. So you need, you need what they call a dead cat. And it's that big piece of fur that they put on microphones and it cuts down on the wind rumble. And look what came with that microphone. Look at the size of that. It's almost as big as a cat. So I'll show you the, the, the total setup now. That's what I'm walking around with in these sometimes very sort of dodgy areas of Manchester and through bits of forests and woods that you've seen. And people look at it and it's not good. People stare at you with this thing and they're sort of like curious and in some respects it kind of like gets people chatting to you and that's quite nice but sometimes you don't want to be seen with it it's too much so you can see I'm just having a bit of a moan and I'm ranting this video that it's too much and when you start changing the lenses and lens caps and covers and things like that I'm just going to lose something aren't I? as you know I'm prone to doing but still it's great audio great video and I suppose that's the the main thing but um, just a lot of paraphernalia. It's almost like an outside broadcast now, isn't it? And when you think I used to have a little camera that I used to be able to just shove in my pocket, pull it out, speak to it, and then shove it back in my pocket and walk on. And that's the way I like to operate. So I keep thinking of getting the G7X back again. <laughs> Does anyone want to buy a camera? So I'm just off Aston uh, New Road, and believe it or not, the Medlock is down there somewhere. And I've just had to venture down there to sort of go and look at it, because that's what this sort of documentary requires. So I'm going to leave it here. Um, this is all the filming I'm going to do for today. But probably for about the past, I don't know, two hours, I've been just jaunting around this area, getting bits of uh, footage and stuff. And there's still more to get, and I've still got to rope in all the pictures yet. A couple of good surprises though, for me. Uh, but I'll just retrace the steps now because we're going to get the tram back into Manchester. And I'll show you the bits and bots for this uh, Medlock episode four that I'm doing. I want to take a closer look inside so 
as, for, as per my rant before, I need to change the lens to put the zoom lens on and we'll try and take a closer look inside of it. So these streets just back of Piccadilly, as you probably know a lot of you, um, the Northern Quarter, these back streets are full of sort of art like that. And I thought of doing um, a bit of a photo walk around here, a bit of a walk, just looking at the art and the buildings. What do you think? Think I should do it? Might do it. Let me know what you think in the comments because I don't actually know a great deal about the history around here or what some of the buildings were, but we could certainly have a walk around and look at things, things like that in particular. Give us a comment down below and tell me if you think I should have a walk around the Northern Quarter talking about the art and looking at the buildings.